people who look at that painting a hundred times and never notice that the man on the oar is an African American. The Marbleheaders were a band of black and indigenous people who came from Marblehead, Massachusetts. They had a very specialized skill set that they could manage these boats. I remember being in high school and learning about American history, and I always felt that there was something left out. I really didn't feel like I was connected to the history that we were learning. We weren't given the complete story. People in power wanted history to be slanted from their perspective, from the white lens. And so when you only have history coming from one source, from one white source, you don't get the full story. George Washington really didn't want the black troops. My version of it is after they got their butts kicked, then they said, well, maybe we better let some of the black people come in and help us out. It retelling the story so that it makes sense for people like me. Right now, we're in a political period where it's under threat. I look at this kind of history and say it should never be under threat. These are the types of stories that everybody should know about. Every history book should have them. Every school child should know about the Marbleheaders. They should know about what happened on December 25th. At the beginning of our country, it was because of people of color. They were also part of the history. African American history is American history. Good evening, everyone. I'm so delighted to see everyone here. We've got such a wonderful gathering uh, for tonight's conversation. I'm Sarah Curitan, and I'm the Executive Director of the New Jersey Historical Commission in the Department of State. And tonight we get to do one of those, one of our favorite things, which is really to talk to all of you. Um, we are um, very excited to dive into this very, very challenging, important, and exciting project, which is to create um, a New Jersey Black Heritage Trail. Governor Murphy signed that legislation into law in the fall of 2022, and since then, we've been working really hard to get this project off the ground, and a key part of this the first part of this very much is to reach out and hear from all of you, hear about your, your interests, your aspirations, your ideas about what this trail could be, how it could work, and what kind of places you'd like to see included on the trail around the state. So to get us started, I wanted to share um, a wonderful message from uh, the leader of our department, um, our Secretary of State, Tahisha Way. She serves as New Jersey's 34th Secretary of State, um, and she serves as New Jersey's top election official overseeing the State Division of Elections and its work in securing our democracy and ensuring broad, fair access to the right to vote. She also chaired New Jersey's Complete Count Commission, a 27-member nonpartisan commission established to achieve a complete count in the 2020 U.S. Census. Now, uh, in addition to the critical work protecting what Secretary Wei calls the fraternal twins of democracy, Ms. Wei also oversees the state government offices supporting New Jersey's vibrant arts, culture, history, and business communities. And I know that she's particularly excited about this project. So with that, I'd like us all to hear from Secretary Wei. Greetings. I'm New Jersey Secretary of State Tahisha Way, and I am honored that my Department of State is home to the New Jersey Historical Commission. I'm also excited to welcome you to this program hosted by the Historical Commission's African American History Program as we establish New Jersey's Black Heritage Trail. As you may know, 
Governor Murphy signed legislation last year establishing the Black Heritage Trail to promote awareness and appreciation of Black history, heritage, and culture. For more than three centuries, African Americans have lived, worked, and made history in our state. The establishment of the Black Heritage Trail helps us better explore, understand, and share the truth of our rich history with residents and visitors alike. Milestones on the trail will highlight both prominent and lesser known sites. We are actively seeking community engagement through meetings and surveys to ensure that the public's input informs the selection of these sites. This continues efforts across the Murphy administration to ensure that New Jersey's diverse populations, communities, and movements are included in our state's past, present, and future. Thank you for your interest in New Jersey's Black Heritage Trails. We look forward to working with you on this momentous project. Thank you so much, Secretary Way. Um, I've got thunderstorms moving through my town, so please forgive me if my um, internet gets a, goes a little wonky here. <laughs> um, it's now my great pleasure to introduce uh, a man who's been a champion of this project uh, right from the start and a, and a sponsor of the legislation that creates this trail. Antoine McClellan has been an assemblyman since 2019, serving as Republican whip since January 2022. A lifelong resident of Ocean City, he served as councilman from 2012 to 2019 and as a member of the Ocean City Board of Education from 2010 to 2012. Additionally, he serves as a trustee on the Ocean City Historical Museum and volunteers for the South Jersey Field of Dreams, which provides the opportunity for special needs children to participate in sports programs. A 1993 graduate of Ocean City High School, McClellan attended Virginia State University and Old Dominion University. He works as public information officer and personnel director in the Cape May County Sheriff's Office. Assemblyman McClellan, we're so pleased that you could join us this evening. Good evening and thank you very much for having me. And uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank uh, Secretary Way. She's been uh, she's been great to work with and um, very inspiring. So I, I enjoy the fact that and the effort that she's put into this. And um, Noel Williams, thank you very much for all the work that you've done in reaching out and making sure that uh, South Jersey is included. And you know, my thought process with this was not only just to celebrate. Uh, African-American history in February or now Juneteenth or for Martin Luther King, but we can celebrate it 365 days out of the year and make sure that everybody can come to New Jersey because New Jersey is a tourism state and celebrate each other's culture and let everybody know the great things that African-Americans have done for the state of New Jersey. And specifically, we're bringing this to South Jersey. I know you're traveling throughout the state, but specifically, I want everybody to know the rich African-American history that South Jersey has and means to everybody. Um, so with no you know, further ado, I'm going to turn this back over to you. Thank you for having me. May God continue to bless you and your families. And let's enjoy the information that we're going to get. And let's make this a great history heritage trail. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Assemblyman McClellan, uh, for all of your efforts and for joining us this evening. We really appreciate it. Thank you. So right now, I'm going to just do a brief overview for everyone um, before we have some discussion, um, just to highlight some aspects of the Black Heritage Trail. Um, we're in the beginning process of it, and um, we just wanted to garner as much input from the residents of New Jersey um, as we develop this to make it a truly engaging experience. So um, you should all be able to see the first slide uh, for the Black Heritage Trail community meeting. Um, we had two meetings that were in person. Um, this is our first virtual meeting. 
So the African American history programs work um, actually, my name is Noelle Lorraine Williams. I'm the director of the African American History Program here at the New Jersey Historical Society, New Jersey Historical Commission. And, and I'm pleased to be here. Um, this position was recently um, reinstituted two years ago. Um, it includes a speaker and panel series to preserve and engage the public about New Jersey's history and historical sites. Um, and many sessions are made available um, actually online, which we'll discuss. We also administered the Mildred B. Gar Garvin Prize. So um, that's for teachers doing excellent work, um, sharing African-American history in K through 12. Um, that deadline will be in the fall. We should begin publishing, publishing that um, in the next month or six weeks. So please keep that on your radar. Um, the best way to stay um, informed about that is um, to join our mailing list, um, which we will post in the chat. Um, also, we are now in the fourth 40 years plus in sponsoring the annual Marion Thompson Wright Lecture. Um, we also consult on other initiatives at the Historical Commission, including Revolution NJ, and finally, um, administering the Black Heritage Trail, which is why we're here today. So um, the New Jersey Historical Commission's work the New Jersey Historical Commission for the Black Heritage Trail will work in cooperation with other state agencies. So we're not um, working alone. Uh, we're working with the Historic Preservation Office, the Division of Travel and Tourism, as well as other local governments, owners, or operators of the Black Heritage sites. Uh, we're also working with uh, leaders in our communities. Um, the bill also names the New Jersey Black Heritage Foundation as a principal collaborator due to its mission that includes broadening, deepening, and diversifying statewide participation in and appreciation for Black arts, history, and culture. Um, and one of the reasons why we're all qualify to do this is because um, this is essentially a part of the work that we do now. So for example, travel and tourism, um, they have itineraries uh, that they present on Visit New Jersey so people can learn more about Black history, uh, women's history. Uh, there's an itinerary for 9-11 travel. Um, but these, while we have these examples of the Black Heritage Trail um, itineraries, which many of you have seen, that is not um, the program that we are working on now. But um, it, the information from travel and tourism and the work that they have done will influence and shape our work. Uh, you also see the image of the New Jersey Historical Commission's YouTube page, where we have dozens of programs about African-American history, American history, uh, Native American history. So we encourage you to visit that as, as, as well as our um, YouTube pages. So I share that here so that the audience, um, all of you can see that in many ways, the agencies have been working um, to develop work around African American history. The Black Heritage Trail will give us the opportunity to amplify this work and connect it in stronger ways so that um, more folks in the community and visitors to New Jersey can also learn about it. Who are we? the New Jersey Historical Commission. Um, we're a state agency dedicated to the advancement of public knowledge and preservation of New Jersey history. Um, we have a grant program. Some of you on the call have been uh, funded. Your projects have been funded by the New Jersey Historical Commission or our county regranting program. We also do conferences and other educational programs. Uh, we were established in 1967 um, and it's founded on the fundamental belief that an understanding of our shared heritage is essential to sustaining a cohesive and robust uh, democracy. We're a part of the Department of State. 
So what is this concept, right? What is our shared heritage? Um, it means that we actually coexist um, in similar places and spaces uh, while we are still having both shared and radically different experiences. So um, we are having a deeper acknowledgement of that over the last hundred or so years in the United States. Uh, but we continue to think about this in the public sphere, in social media, and other places of how we can both have similar experiences, but then also have radically different experiences in our legal system, um, our social systems, and in our culture. So, we have seen the amplification of public spaces as opportunities uh, for education, scholarship, and healing, right? Um, and so we want to um, take advantage of this opportunity. Um, so the um, Black Heritage Trail will continue to amplify a lot of the work um, that's been going on around the country. Um, in amplifying our various histories um, to learn more about each other. Um, and we're going to do this in tandem with um, social media, um, online um, systems, and other kinds of programs. So here we can see um, we have this example, we have it right here in Atlantic City. Um, so some of you, if you think now, um, your experience of Atlantic City, it may be one of um, fun and frolic. Uh, for other folks, it may be a different experience. Um, so here we have pictured two different um, historical experiences. One is that the Atlantic City Convention Hall um, where Fannie Lou Hamer and the Freedom De and the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party came to challenge Mississippi Democrats at the Democratic Convention there at the hall. Um, and so that a marker there or acknowledging the history there is of consequence for African-American history, um, American law, democracy. Um, it's also something um, that um, is you know, connected to Mississippi history. And so we get to see how these moments um, are shared um, and they also uh, amplify like our work as in creating a robust democracy. Um, on the right, you'll see an image of women at Chicken Bone Beach. Um, that was the segregated section of the beach uh, that was actually instituted in the early 20th century. So prior to that, the beach actually wasn't segregated to our knowledge. Um, and so it was called Chicken Bone Beach. I think there's an image of Martin Luther King visiting the beach. Um, so African-Americans would gather there during the summer. Um, there are uh, several education sources about Chicken Bone Beach in Atlantic City. These markers become and create opportunities to make visible history um, that may seem invisible. So here we can see the Black Heritage Foundation on the right um, at the marker in Camden um, that says enslaved Africans were once sold here. Uh, many of you may be familiar with the marker that's in Perth Amboy. There's also an additional one in Camden. Uh, the one in Perth Amboy is a UNESCO uh, Heritage Foundation site, meaning that this is of value to world history, um, that enslaved African and Africans were sold and traded here uh, for their skills and their labor. Um, in their bodies. And so we actually see some of the folks from the Black Heritage Foundation, including uh, Mr. Davis um, and Mr. Graham, Secretary Way, um, and other um, folks of note. On the, on the left, you will see um, in Newark, we have uh, Harriet Tubman, the newly renamed Harriet Tubman Square. And there uh, we can actually see how the monument has engaged 
uh, African American history or the history of Newark actually in the walls. So New Jersey African American history um, extends to when it was a colonial settler plantation and actually helped to define freedom in the legislative system and culture. So what does that mean? So that we know that through Africans and African Americans, petitioning for freedom, it pushed discussions about democracy in the United States. From as early on from the 1700s, um, laws were created to restrict and control African Americans in, in the United States. Later on, uh, New Jersey is different in that um, African American men and women, as well as white women, were allowed to vote if they had um, met the property, um, the monetary requirement. Um, later on, that was rescinded. Um, and so we see New Jersey has a complex history um, regarding suffrage and democracy and citizenship. On the left, we actually can see uh, um, an ad for Colonel Ty was an African American who fought in the Revolutionary War. This is actually a runaway ad for him. And on the right is a well that's in the yard of the Newark Museum of Art. Um, that was, um, it's noted because uh, George Washington um, was believed to have had water from this well. This is a well curb. Um, it doesn't have the ladle and everything that usually have in it. So you just imagine that this would actually go over the hole in the ground. Um, but this was actually carved by um, Af enslaved Africans in Newark um, in the 1700s. You can actually see some of the markings still on the carvings if you go um, there are so many elements of African American history in the um, 18th century, the 19th century, the 20th century that we don't even know about. Um, some of you will see actually in the left corner of this image, um, you'll see Dr. Uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, um, and he's here at a meeting actually in Newark. New Jersey, there was an NAACP meeting. Um, a major component of that was um, the discussion of the dire anti-lynching law. Um, so while we all know about the white parade, um, or many of us know about it in Harlem, there was actually a similar parade in 1921 um, in Newark where there were anti-lynching signs um, and the NAACP actually convened a meeting there. But what's essential is that these movements are a part of defining the de democratic process and they're integral to this nation's history and integral to the world's history. Uh, finally, one of the um, aspects is again, um, so New Jersey African-American history's impact on culture. Um, this is, often discussed um, in the media. Um, and we see African-American artists uh, like Count Basie from Red Bank, Queen Latifah, who was born in Newark and lived in East Orange. And also on the bottom, we see Paul Robeson. Um, and what's very interesting is that we get to see these artists who are world-renowned artists from New Jersey, whose work is also impacted by social justice. Um, though the Black Heritage Trail does not have a mandate to include social justice, um, but why it's mentioned today in this um, PowerPoint is just to demonstrate the continuing impact of African-Americans in defining um, human rights. Finally, uh, New Jersey African American contributions to religious um, health and actually technological movements. So we get to see um, an African American hospital here uh, in Newark, 
um, that was created to train Black doctors and nurses. Um, Black um, African Americans could not be trained. Um, and during that period, they could use certain hospitals, but they could not receive training there. So this hospital in Newark um, was able to um, founded by Dr. Kenny um, to train African-Americans. And the building actually still stands and is in use now as a church. They're developing the site as a museum. Um, and over here on the right, we see Reverend Florence Randolph. Um, and Reverend Florence Randolph, she was a reverend in the AME Zion Church, but she also was a suffrage leader here in New Jersey and helped to fight for the 19th Amendment, which granted um, most women in the United States, not all, the right to vote. So, what we want to do now is actually um, break out. We're going to actually break out in for about 20 minutes is um, if you could develop the Black Heritage Trail, what would it look like? So what would it look like as far as um, the actual markers? What would it look like? What kind of programs will be attached to it? Um, what might it look like as far as, um, you know, if it's, will it be on the web? Uh, will it be a trail, a literal trail um, that you all would like to walk? Um, so it's it's like your 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 biggest imagination of what the the Black Heritage Trail would look like, um, and then the second question is what resources are important to include to maximize the benefit of the Black Heritage Trail program. So again, so I just use um, social media as um, something to um, be a part of the trail, but. It could also be something that can be used to maximize the benefit of the Black Heritage Trail program. Take notes, and then we will do report backs. So I guess we can start with report backs. Um, maybe we can start with group three. I believe that was uh, Greg's group. So who, Greg, do you know who was reporting back for your group? Yeah, so I just open for anyone to volunteer uh, to represent a group. So anyone can just jump in. For group three? Yes. Is there someone raising their hand or? Well, I'll, I'll jump in if nobody else will. Bill May. <laughs> oh, hey. Hey, Mr. May. <laughs> um, to summarize, um, it was about getting all parts of the state, the southern part of the state especially, uh, involved in the trail. Um, the counties mentioned most of all were Atlanta County, Cape May County, and Cumberland County. And then in the northern area, uh, Bergen County was mentioned. So it was about getting those counties um, more, more information out to, to the world. Mm -hmm. And one of the people in the group talk uh, who has a background in marketing um, mentioned some things that were very specific in terms of how uh, the, um, the marketing aspect should be handled to so that more people know about um, the African American contribution um, in the state of New Jersey, and you know, it's not just as the gentleman from Atlantic City talked about. You know, it's not just the casinos and you know and things like that. It's you know, it's much much more serious than that. Um, there are churches that could be included in the trail. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, um, I know from personal experience there are some churches right there in, in the Cumberland County and I. Uh, and some mentioned in the other counties down there, but that still stand, including uh, at least two in Cumberland County, Quaker meeting houses, um, and they're both active. So that's what I bring from group three. I don't know if anybody else wants to join in that part, if I left anything out. Yes, just, just black LGBTQ history too. <laughs> I'm guilty, um, sorry about that. 
<laughs> the the other thing that I think that is important that came out of the group, some people mentioned a QR code, which I think is really quite innovative. Someone else mentioned a two day tour. Um, you know, I think that there was a lot of emphasis on the southern part of the state and I understand that and I accept it but at the same time it's like you know for whatever reason Bergen County was is a very important county in terms of the gen the sort of like uh I don't know the whole historical issue of slavery and we also mentioned that it was important to go beyond slavery even though slavery is very very important that we've done more than be enslaved as a people. Um, is there, are there any other comments from the group before we move to group two? Okay, well, thank you, Kristen, Bill, and Deirdre for reporting from your group. Thanks, Noah. So who, is um group two um who's doing the report back for group two that would be kimberly okay i see i can find kimberly I'm here <laughs> okay um so we kind of discussed like what would um okay. the tra trail look like um and had a couple of ideas that centered around number one um making sure that it promotes travel throughout the state, like um, from Northern New Jersey all the way to Southern New Jersey, and really um, connecting all of the sites. Um, I think we saw it more as like a physical um, places um, and monuments. We talked about incorporating like artists and art sculpt sculpture in the trails, um, annual events, maybe creating like a passport that engages children uh, where they can get like stamps for each site, kind of thing like that. Um, and also professional class lessons to um, maybe be able to fund field trips or connect with teachers or, you know, anybody in education to create field trips to these sites. Um, and then a big focus was also technology to be able to make sure that we're reaching people um, to the work and everything that is ultimately created. Um, making sure that it incorporates a lot of technology. And I think that covers it all uh, and it promotes travel. Yeah. Um, if anybody else in the group wants to jump in, if I missed anything, feel free. Kimberly, you did a great job. Um, we also talked about the importance of defining what trail meant. Yeah. Trail. I, I hear Deborah's voice. I don't see her. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We 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 had a discussion on on uh, what exactly meant when we said trail. Mm -hmm. You know, was it an actual walking experience or was it tied to a certain thing? Like what was stated earlier, um, could it be tied to an arts theme? And then an artist could talk about how. I don't know. Where's my artist person? <laughs> she spoke so she spoke so well, you know, but um understanding what we define as trail is very important. Mm. Okay. Um is there anyone else from group two who I'll Would just I... I'll just add that we did mention that if it is a trail that is a physical space to make sure that it is accessible to everyone. Okay. Not including special needs. Um and multicultural and multicultural yeah and and um great thank you i know uh, that also came up in the in the last meeting and that's one of the great things that um the online and the apps help is that we could also offer translations too mm -hmm. okay great well thank you group two so group one um, so uh, I didn't um, I didn't do the assignment, um, Noel. Oh, <laughs> we didn't we didn't appoint um, a group uh, reporter. But here's be and I was writing so furiously that we didn't get to that. So I'll report, but please, uh, group members, group one members, please chime in when I've forgotten something or if I've gotten it. 
um, gotten the message wrong. We had a robust um, conversation. Um, uh, among the comments were the following. Um, uh, the idea that we, we need to make sure that these markers stand out and are easily recognizable as Black Heritage Trail markers, physically recognizable and differentiated from the other kinds of markers that we have around the state. They need to link to additional information and opportunities to learn more. Um, and there were, you're going to hear a number of suggestions that echo what some of the other groups talked about too, whether that's using a QR code or using a, an app of some sort to make additional information about the destinations readily available. Mm -hmm. um, there, were, um, there was a desire to also see these markers as destinations and linked to other sites that would, lead, you know, that would lead visitors on to see other sites and other resources in the same area. Um, I, I, there was acknowledgement that markers are small and the information to be represented on them is by nature limited. So picking up on that, you know, a theme that runs through all of these is this was an idea that really we need to investigate multimedia opportunities for <coughs> these markers to, to go along with them. Um, one of our group members wanted to see uh, uh, the the sites covered and the and the stories covered to, as very inclusive to include a variety of people who participate, participated, especially in the civil rights movement. Um, uh, and and to, uh, in addition, two of the African American cemeteries in Bedminster were mentioned as places that needed to be included. Um, there was a concern by one of our members that some of these sites don't exist anymore. Um, and we have talked about that very much in the um, uh, in the uh, office, thinking about this, and that we need to develop strategies for representing those sites that need to be marked but are no longer physically there. So whether that's virtual representations or artistic representations of the sites, that's something we need to think about. We got a wonderful shout out from the um, Archaeological Society of New Jersey, who offers their help. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we need it. Um, and George Leader from that group um, also endorsed the idea of using QR codes to provide additional information for study and learning at these sites. Um, uh, let's see. Um, QR codes again. Oh, I know another idea was offered that um, perhaps we could develop some kind of audio component to the trail or to the marker uh, programs, as well as a desire to use maps to link to help visitors link these sites geographically to one another. Um, another member of the group suggested that, that the trail could actually be a scenic highway. Um, which would really introduce it to a whole other audience of potential users and visitors if it was also identified as a scenic byway. Um, that that um, participant also noticed, oh, I wish I could read my own writing, oh, that we could use story maps as another strategy um, and that interactivity with some of these programs and um, resources is really key. Um, Another member noted that we should try to use as many different media platforms as possible so that we could really extend the reach of this project. Um, another member noted that we need to think about users who have disabilities. So we have to make the, the, the trail and the resources um, inclusive and accessible to those who don't who have disabilities of different types. Um, uh, finally, uh, two more comments. Um, we should not, uh, we were suggested, it was suggested we should not forget that there are um, living history uh, practitioners um, and reenactment groups in the state that, um, that portray especially African American units and that they can be part of this trail and the teaching that we do around it. And then finally, um, that, and this came out in, I think, that last group too, that we should look for ways to connect the trail to. Um, schools to K through 12 classrooms um, and to um, the teaching and learning that goes on there as well. So group one, uh, please uh, shout out if I, if I forgot something or misrepresented. <laughs> Is there anyone else from group one that wanted to add to Sarah's comments? No, you did a great job, Sarah. <laughs> no, okay, thank you. <laughs> I was so, writing fast. 
I, I know we're we're moving swiftly. I, I know many of us have been in meetings for three hours on <laughs> topics like this. So this is this is admirable. Uh, Sarah, could you please explain the scenic byway before? Um, I'm going to, Sue Kozel was the author of that suggestion. Sue, do you want to um, elaborate just briefly on that concept, that idea? idea? Yes. Um, hi, Nicole, uh, and hi, Noel. Um, I am very excited by the scenic byway. We did it in Upper Freehold. We did it around farming and um, revolutionary war sites. And the state of New Jersey paid for it, constructed it, provided signage, the citizen committee of which I was vice chair, we pulled together all of the narrative and report. And then a map was created along with sound that would take people around this township who would like to go on a scenic tour of these vital sites. Oh, and so, yeah. So my thought was, why don't we have that with your amazing Black Heritage Trail where the Department of Transportation, Tourism, you partner possibly get Biden money from Department, Federal Department of Transportation. And we create this multi-county linking byway. And it could be hard copy. And for, for what goes on, you can have the story maps where images come up or a narrator comes up and explains the significance of the site. It could be as creative as resources allow, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Who's going straight to the top, straight to the president? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'd say, show me the money. Show me the money. Yeah. And I want to one other thing to add in here, um, Noelle, that folks are, are mentioning, and that is that, um, that trying to key into teaching, not just at K to 12, but also at the college and university level. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, I just wanted to acknowledge um, there were two questions. Um, so we're also going to save the chat, and this this recording will actually uh, be added to our YouTube. Um, so if someone can just, uh, Greg, if you can put the link for our YouTube, and I'm going to add you all to the Black Heritage Trail mailing list. Obviously, you can opt out um, if you want to. So I see there's a question. Is there a way to link this important work to the Amistad curriculum mandated by state law? Um, I think it's evident um, from this discussion and from all our community discussions that this is going to require um, different levels of partnership. And I think definitely the Amistad um, Commission is uh, definitely folks that we, we will um, meet with and partner with and also brainstorm on potential collaborations. So thank you for reminding us all of that. Um, and it looks like there was another question. I think it was from Kristen. Um, they wrote something about New Jersey Transit ever partner and do a train ride that takes people on a heritage journey of sorts? Uh, that's another great question. Definitely, I would just like to emphasize, um, these are all great suggestions. Um, we're going to create a document of sorts that's going to include the work in the survey, what's, what folks submit from the survey, as well as the comments um, that we received in the two community meetings and this meeting. Um, to think about and prioritize um, regarding our work around the markers and also programming and partnerships that will be connected to the markers. Uh, let's see, I'll look at one more question uh, before we go, where we wish to rewrite current historical um, markers. So that's definitely something that's going to be a part of our planning process over the next two months. Um, and the I would just like to mention um, that the New Jersey Historical Commission actually um, looked at, I think Sarah can just talk briefly about it. Um, we, we actually recently did a report um, uh, on the historical markers related to the Revolutionary War. Um, and uh, Sarah, did you want to just say something briefly about that? Um, so well, that yeah, if you um, if you do go to our website and maybe we can throw the link up there, um, yeah. we did do an inventory of. And, but let me back up. The state of New Jersey 
has actually only erected um, historical markers twice. And it was a long time ago. It was in the 1930s and wow. the 1960s. So the 1930s era ones are the ones that were cast um, aluminum that are that survived more, and the the 1960s ones were of the you know flimsy blue um, ones that have not lasted as well. So we did do a complete inventory of those, which is up on our website. So you can poke around them there if you'd like. I believe it's even indexed by county if you want to look. So. Um, one of our, we did that because we wanted to, to first see what we had already done, what's out there. Um, and uh, we very much want to update and expand what's there. And um, the reality is quite frankly, um, there's very few markers that have, um, I mean, the, the American Revolution and, and military battles are the primary subject of those early waves of markers. Let me just leave it that way. So a lot of the information and material that I think it's going to be a huge part of this Black Heritage Trail and future markers has yet to be covered by our state markers. So a lot yet to come. Okay. So, I mean, connected to that is a lot. Just be careful. A lot of the markers that you see out there are not in state of New Jersey markers. They're counties or cities or other um, historical organizations, preservation commissions, et cetera. Have done. Great. Thank you, Sarah. So I had Sarah uh, speak to that. Uh, because we, um, that is a deep consideration and part of our planning process. Um, so we've, we've undertaken it, looking at the Revolutionary War um, markers. So just wanted to assure um, folks of this. So um, on that note, we are actually going to close for the evening um, on behalf of the New Jersey Historical Commission um, and Assemblyman McClellan and Sarah Keratin, who's right here next to me, <laughs> as well as the staff of the um, commission. I just want to thank you all uh, for joining the meeting. Um, next steps. So next steps uh, for the Black Heritage Trail uh, will include, um, as I indicated earlier, we will have a survey. Um, we will have a survey um, that's still up. Some of you have taken it. Um, you still have the opportunity to take it to July 10th. Uh, please share it. It's in the chat uh, with your neighbors and your colleagues. Um, and then after that, we'll be going through developing the guidelines process. Um, we're also going to have a logo contest as well. Uh, and just doing the work of um, creating an inclusive uh, marker program um, and adjoining programming. So thank you again to Secretary Tahisha Way, Assemblyman McClellan for joining us today. Uh, thank you to all of the participants. Again, please join our mailing list and share the information with your friends. I'm going to say thank you all for coming. Good night. We look forward to continuing this process with you um, and have a good week. Um, and, you know, I feel that Juneteenth will last until the end of the month. So um, yeah. please, <laughs> please continue to engage that. Uh, and good night. Thank you. Good job. Great job. Right. Mm -hmm. Great job.